Am I? We are. And we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Carol and John's Comic Shop, Tuesday nights. Uh, I'm John Shear. I'm here with Andrea and Roth. Hey, and right. special guest appearance, John Dudas. So Ben's, <laughs> Ben's on vacation, so I'll be taking the reins on this one. Uh, thanks for coming out tonight. And uh, actually, we're going to put it over to John to let you know what's going on for the rest of the week and the rest of the month. Yeah, Ben's out, so I'm here today. Uh, Ben's in Prague, Bud Budapest. Oh, he Budapest left Prague. Right he didn't get red roomed in Prague. We were trying to make sure that if he got locked in a red room because he fell asleep in a hostel and woke up in a room to send us the dark web login code so we could send some Bitcoin and try and keep him alive for a little bit longer. <laughs> but um, we're doing great. Thank you to everyone here. Uh, we're doing good. We're doing good without Ben. We're okay without <laughs> Ben, but we're waiting for you to come back. Ben comes back late Friday. Yeah. Late, late Friday. So um, we will be hosting late night comics without Ben. Uh, everyone in the room will be here, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Everyone in the room will be here. And I've got 40 new long boxes of dollar stock coming out. I'd say it's half new DC, probably 30% Marvel, 20% independence, but all new stuff, all a buck a piece. All back issues will be half off. And that will include the wall this time, except this small section right here, because I just got these X-Men in, and I'm not making them half off yet. They'll be 25% off, as always. But all the rest of the wall will be, including this, and we've gotten a lot of good stuff in since last Saturday, Late Night Comics. Yeah. Late Night Comics is fun. And you can celebrate St. Patrick's Day with us. Uh, I got some Irish beer. We did really great at the Harper Show. Zoe, my daughter, worked with me for the first time. We did good enough that I've got snacks, too, for the first time. Whoa. Chips, a little independent. Yeah, chips, it's going to be awesome. And uh, Irish beer, so you could uh, celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day Eve with us. I got Conway's Irish Ale. I got some Guinness for the early people. And Killian's Irish Red. That was a uh, microbrew when I was, uh, that's, when that's I was young. That was the only, yeah, that was yeah. one of my first favorite beers, yeah. And uh, whatever Thirsty Dog's Irish beer. So we have that, and we'll make sure it's served cold to keep you shopping. And if you make it till midnight, you could even say Happy St. Patrick's Day, right? That's so true. Um, then next week is the Fan Fest downtown next weekend, March 24th through the 26th. 24th, 25th, and 26th. And while that's going on, now it used to be Wizard World, now it's Fan Expo. We do a sale in shop. We call it Winston World because we used to whip off Wizard World. We had a little play of words and we'd hijack their social media. Now we work with them. But you get half off all back issues, all back issues, and 10% off everything else in the store for the weekend. And it's, uh, it, so you don't have to come in late night to shop for half off. So you have two more opportunities for half off back issues. And that's it. I'll, I'm just happy to be here, everybody. <laughs> I'll go hide uh, So we're gonna do first appearances, keep that going. Uh, Secret Invasion, the final issue of that is uh, first appearance of, uh, of a new female Super Scroll. Uh, so there's that. And then the Batman uh, animated, uh, animated Adventures continue, number three. First appearance of the straight man. So he's like a Joker lackey, which works out really well. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to hit the table. Yep. We're going to start off with uh, Image. Um, we'll go at the end here. Uh, Scott Snyder's Nocterra's on issue 12. We've got the regular and the 1 in 25 variant hitting the table. Uh, Little Monsters by Jeff, Jeff Lemire and Dustin Wynn on issue 11. Still going strong. They are little vampires. Uh, Black Cloak is on number three by Kelly Thompson. We'll see more of her later on. Uh, Last Barbarians is on number two. Monarchs on number two as well. Time Before Times on issue 21. I can't believe that's still going on. Yeah. Strong. So yeah, yeah, it's good for them. Yeah. Uh, Gunslinger Spawn issue 18 is a Mark Brooks cover. He's doing all the covers for the Spawns this month. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hate Fairyland. Everybody at the show this weekend asked for gunslinger spawns. That was really? like a huge thing, and I have no idea where that came from. So I don't oh. know if it's ticking up back issue wise, but I probably had a half dozen people out of the blue asking about gunslinger spawns. Well, how about All right. right, worth taking note of. Yeah. All right. Uh, Scotty Young's I Hate Fairyland is on issue five. I am fully caught up except for this issue, and I love it. It is wonderful. Uh, we've got the Peach Momoko variant there. Um, Art Brutes on number four. I'm pretty sure four of four. Yeah, I think that's uh, right. And then, probably the surprise of the week, no one from the Massive Verse uh, in the image section. It is a mystery that also has a podcast to go along with it. Uh, not a real podcast. It's got like Patton Oswalt and Rachel Lee Cook doing voices for it. But 
it seems like it's the podcast that they talk about in the book. Yes. And great mystery. Uh, serial killer, like superhero killer. He's not killing superheroes, but he is like a, like a costume person dressed up and killing people. And the person who's responsible is supposedly in jail. So Ooh. it's a good hook. We've got the regular cover for that, and then the one in 10 variant right there. Um, and then the other big image book this week is The Forged. This is the one these guys have read, and I've read the last page, and the last page is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a big one. It's uh, co written, I think, by Greg Rucka. Uh, if you're a big fan of Heavy Metal Magazine and lots of fun colors, uh, check this one out. It's a mini series. At first, I thought it was a one shot. I'm glad it isn't, though. Uh, but it's oversized, too, so it's definitely the big book of the week. Yes. Was that code for weed? If you like heavy metal magazine and bright colors. <laughs> <laughs> That's not until next month. Right, <laughs> uh, next to that, then, is a new uh, image anthology. What issue are they on now? It's 11, seven, I believe. No. Oh, we've... There's they been are some on good issue stuff 11, yeah. the penultimate issue. But there's been some good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah penultimate issue for that. Uh, seven Sons has its collection, the Seven Issues in Trade by Jay Lee, his first book in a long, long time. Uh, Revolvers from Top Cow has its collection. And then the other fun image collection this week is Dark Ride. Basically a amusement park that is demon themed. So yeah, yep. and it's very, very cool. Top of my top of my list this week. Uh, I, you guys kept talking about it and I finally uh, dipped into it and looked into it and it looks great. Yeah. Is it the same yeah. team as uh, Birthright? Yes, uh, same writer. Oh, so yeah. Williamson. Williamson? Yeah. Cool. Um, and then we'll do Second Prince. Cool. We got Scarlet Witch number two with uh, Viv on the cover there. Gotta love that. Uh, Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, number issue one. one. Uh, ooh, nice Stegman cover. Stegman cover. Yeah. Uh, Miles Morales number three to go with Miles Morales four later on. Uh, Sins of Sinister number one with its cool black, white, and red cover. Uh, Dark Web uh, finale. Got the is, King Chasm on the front. Yep, there you awesome. go. And Hell's Eve. And then we go into trade paperbacks. Uh, Jessica Jones has uh, her trade paperback, The Variants, with many different Jessica Joneses uh, all teaming up and fighting each other and stuff like that. X-Men Reds on Volume 2. Um, Aliens, the original years. This is like the first three uh, miniseries all collected in one big giant uh, epic collection. Uh, and then Star Wars, The Old Republic is on volume five. Uh, Kelly Thompson's Deadpool with Deadpool and Jeff the Shark and Elsa Bloodstone with art by Chris Boccolo. Like, it's wonderful. It's great. I wish Lots there was like monsters. a big Deadpool fan here to tell us about it. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, the other second print that we've got is uh, Silver Surfer Ghost Light. Uh, that was a Big hits, and so we got lots of number ones back in because we really like this book. And we got number twos on uh, last week's wall as well. There we go. Uh, Yoda's on number five, <laughs> getting rid of the yellow, uh, the green uh, numbering, no. which made us all disappointed. I know. <laughs> uh, the Excellent by uh, Milligan and Allred uh, picks up right where the last one left off. We've got season two. We've got the regular cover. We've got the... I don't remember who did this cover, but we're going to call that the cover B. It looks like Chris Anka-ish. Oh, it is Chris Anka. We'll say that. Yeah. The Chris Anka cover and then the awesome yellow cover. Um, previously mentioned Secret Invasion is on issue five, um, the final. Uh, not. Oh, good. Yep, oh, there we go. Um, we've got the one in 25 variant right here. Uh, Wolverine 31. Juan Jose Rip is still knocking it out of the park with his artwork and Wolverine versus Beast and like Fungus Beast. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the regular cover. We've got the Alex Ross uh, variant. We've got the one in 25. And then Captain America Symbol of Truth. Uh, the final one for Falcons, uh, Captain America, um, before they lead into the, mm. the merge Captain America like books. Crossover. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we've got the regular cover there, and then Alex Ross's... Gotta love a good Red Skull. Gotta love a good Skull. Cube. Yep. Yeah. I have that statue. It's Jason right got it for you. me. It's yeah. right there, isn't it? It is. It's, it's back there oh, somewhere. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Uh, the big fights. 
lots of fighting. Uh, Miles in peril, Miles' family in peril. It's great. Uh, we've got the regular cover. We've got the 1 in 25 variant, and then we have the Alex Ross Scorpion cover for that one. Uh, Red Goblin, picking up where the last one re left off, where you found out who the big goblin bad guy was, continues in here. Uh, we have the cover B, the Stegman variant for that one. Uh, Avengers Forever number 15. This is the penultimate uh, issue to Jason Aaron's event, five-year Avengers run. Uh, just like the last issue of Avengers, monster battles. Like, it is everybody versus everybody. Basically, everybody versus Mephisto and everybody versus Doom. It's great. We've got the cover, cover B variant with all the classic uh, old... The one, million. 1 million BC Avengers, yes. Yep. Then we have the Alex Ross Kang variant, and we have a one in one hundred hit in the variant, <gasps> the hit in the table. Kang's popular. Kang, Kang is popular. <laughs> uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaurs on issue four. It's John's pick of the week. Yeah. That's not, not the book. I didn't, I didn't read the book yet. No, uh, the cartoon's great. Everybody watch the cartoon. It's uh, the whole family enjoys it, and it it's funky and it's 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 really cool. It's uh, they did a really good job on it. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is the Beyonder. Really? Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's double nice. duty for him, right? In the Marvel Universe, because yep. he was Giant Man. Yeah. Yep. Or, uh, Col what's his, uh, well, uh, what, what was movie? the, with the Goliath. Giant Goliath. 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 No, no, yeah. Black, Black Goliath. Black Goliath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but yeah, of course, super cool show. I, I encourage people to give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, above that, Bishop uh, War College is on issue two. And then we have the. Ryan Otley, uh, written and drawn Hulk's going on now. He's basically, I'm, Donny Cates has basically given the reins over to him for the moment, and he's just going, I want to do this, and I can't wait, and I'm having fun doing it. So It's a lot of fun in this issue. Yeah. Uh, you finally get to see Titan be a little more physical, there we and go. it's devastating. Uh, so we've got the Peach Momoko variant there, but then we also have the McNiven homage variant you, which is you told me to put a pile of yes to buy a pile of a mcniven obviously did civil war oh, yeah. back in the day uh the civil war miniseries with millar but you told me to buy a pile it's uh, it's beautiful it's an homage yeah. to incredible hope by mcfarland yes so yeah uh it's really cool and then we don't have the regular one but we do have a one in 100 sketch variant by alex ross of the leader so there we go uh and then Kyle and I's maybe pick of the week is Hellcat, yeah. uh, number one. Chris Cantwell picking up, like, all oh, the really? threads that he had uh, from Iron mm -hmm. Man, and it's a good, good book. Starts off, she's been, she's been arrested for murder, and we've got to figure out, one, did she do it? Two, if she didn't do it, who did? And then three, brings in a whole society of sleepwalkers, because if you're couldn't wait for 90s sleepwalker he's back in this yeah so yeah uh it's a good book issue one we've got the regular cover we've got the in huck lee variant we've got the momoko variant we've got the scotty young which i just made me laugh variant and then the one in 25 stegman variant i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure yep so yeah Campbell's gonna be the new chip zadarski yeah i think yeah in my mind, you're yeah. probably he has your... a very good uh, sense of history for the marvel universe yeah so not wrong writer. Yep. Uh, and then Avengers War Across Time is on issue three, the Alan Davis uh, Avengers book. He's been a store favorite from yeah. customer-wise. So, yeah. And then we're on to DC. Cool. Uh, Superman Lost. <laughs> Superman is lost for 20 years, but it's only been a minute within, like, our regular universe. And... We're going to find out what he's been doing for 20 years. This is, it's a good book. Uh, they could have done Batman Dirty. They did not. It was actually really cool. What, like, if you think about what Batman does, because they think Superman's, like, gone. So, like, all the heroes go tell everybody, like, what happened. And Batman's first response is to go to Lois. And it's really cool. <laughs> so, issue one of 10. Uh, so Mark, uh, Priest is writing that one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Christopher Priest? Chris Priest, yeah. yeah Chris Priest, he's so. a good writer. He's a good, I, so, yeah. like, back in the day, really good writer. I didn't know how to order that book, because they didn't really describe it well when I ordered it. Yeah. So, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, there's a lot of mystery, so we're all just figuring out what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Multiversity Harley, uh, is here. It is not for, uh, kids, uh, <laughs> and it is a lot of fun. There are multi yeah. multiversal Harleys. 
there's, yeah, it's it's everything you want from a Harley book. We've got the regular, and then we've got the cover B variant. Um, DC Universe Lazarus Planet. It's probably the best of the Lazarus Planet stories. Yeah. It's a four-issue it, four miniseries. Yeah. Oh, they're doing four with this one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it is an actual story. Like, all the gods... There are a lot of gods out there, and they want people to worship them, and they feel fear is the best way to get that to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's the first issue of that. It's going to tie in directly with Wonder Woman, uh, and Shazam is playing a very large part in this as well. Oh, uh, makes yeah. sense for the... So, uh... Yep, so we got the regular, and then we have the 1 in 25 Shazam which, variant. Which now I get with the Greek pottery-like background makes a lot of sense with the gods. Yeah. Pretty cool. uh, Batman, Joker, Deadly Duo... This is Enemy of My Enemy edition. It's issues one, two, and three. I have been hyping this book up. Now is your chance to read it. One, two, three in a like eight ninety nine edition. Oh, nice. It's great. Uh, yeah, get it. Mark Silvestri knocking it out of the park with both writing and art. Um, Batman Adventures continues season three on issue three. Again, the straight man's back. Or for the first time. <laughs> uh, we got the regular cover. We've got the B variant. And then we have the 1 in 25 variant. Uh, Batman Incorporated's on number 6. Uh, Just Society of America's on number 3. And it's, oh, it's such a good book. You should be reading that. Uh, we've got the 1 in 25 variant right there. Uh, Batgirl's number 16. Mad Hatter shows up. Stuff happens. Uh, yeah. Danger Streets on issue four, uh, also really cool book. Uh, the Lady Cop is on this cover, and she's also on the very that's cool a, that's cover B. Yeah, that's a cop cover. Yeah, it's a great, great cover. I trust um, you, Tom King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JSA uh, trade paperback. It's the Jeff Johns volume five, uh, but then we go back to actual issues, and we go to Roth for. Wildcats. The reason I'm here, as always. <laughs> uh, new issue of Wildcats this week. Uh, in the last issue, uh, the team is kind of getting uh, understanding what happened because Cole Cash Grifter died. Also, Majestic said he was Kryptonian in like a, just a small little bubble. Uh, in this issue, though, Superman shows up and takes umbrage to that. Uh, but we have a bunch of variants on the table. Uh, we have the Dan Hip Bubble Gun variants. Uh, next to that, we have the International Women's Day variants. Uh, and then also we have the 1 and 25. All right, that's why I needed to be here. And for. speaking of 1 in 25 <laughs> variants, because we did, we got shorted on it, uh, we've got the Poison Ivy 1 in 25 uh, for issue 10 on yes. it, back on the table. Uh, and then final DC book is the Adam Strange uh, Between Two Worlds hardcover. It's 50 bucks. And... 44.99. Oh, 44.99? Oh, nice, 45. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to turn it over to the person who's actually read it. I like that. I'm an Adam Strange fan. I've always been an Adam Strange fan. I like the idea of him being beamed to another planet where he's cool and then his time's up and he gets beamed back down. Uh, the character um, has always been around. Like We have a running gag here that it's like he, he profiled early on in life. He just like, if it's weird, it's, there's, every cover was a picture of him shooting an alien. Like, it's weird, shoot it. It's weird, shoot it. That's how it all happened in America, man. Uh, but seriously, after he had uh, two appearances, he had two issues in a... Uh, Alan Moore, when in Alan Moore's Swamp Thing run, they decided to do a three-part prestige format series that the Kubert brothers did. Yeah. And it's, it's a, I call it a guilty pleasure, but when I was a kid, I kind of liked it, but I really grew into it and I really liked the story. And to me, it's the quintessential Adam Strange origin. It's also backed up with that other mini series that I don't care for that you... And that's yeah. the one I like by Pascal yeah, Ferry, so, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. I like all Adam Strange, but it's definitely front-loaded to me. I, they should have put the Swamp Thing issues in there, too. So they they did done. put the JLA issues by Mark Wade in there. Oh, they did? Those they did. are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Cool, cool. Uh, next to that, though, we got some Dark Horse books, uh, Masters of the Universe, Masterverse. Uh, ties in with the Kevin Smith uh, Netflix show. Uh, so we have the A cover and the B cover. Next to that, the other reason I'm here tonight is there's a new Frank Frazetta Death Dealer book. This book is awesome. It's not the greatest thing ever. It doesn't have to be, though. Uh, but this is issue 10. Uh, it's the end of the second arc. I'm pretty positive. But it's awesome, though. Uh, it's like the ultimate guilty pleasure for me. Uh, and then next to that, then we have a new number one from uh, yep. Mad Cave. Mad Cave. Uh, Hunt, Kill, Repeat. Um, this is another book this week with gods coming to Earth to make humans. Uh, that was what I like. I, th I think I flipped through both of them. Yeah. And when you were talking about the Lazarus planet, I was like, there's a, there's, that's a, that's yeah. a heavy thing yeah, this week. Yeah, we got two this week. Nice. 
So yeah. So this is um, gr all Greek gods oh, okay. come to Earth. They outlaw technology, but one god does not follow along with the family, falls in love with a mortal, so they end up taking her powers and leaving her for dead. And so that's the first half of the book. The second half picks up ten years later when she wakes up. Oh. And the title says <laughs> what her motivations are. <laughs> nice. Cool. nice. I think you sold me on that. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. It's fun, kill, repeat. So yeah, from Mad Cave. Uh, so that's issue one. We've got a little stack there. Um, trade paperback wise, I'm always going to rep Terry Moore's, uh, yep. books. Uh, I actually just did my first Kickstarter, which was a Terry Moore Kickstarter. So wow. Kickstarter? yeah, I actually oh, like oh, you subscribed. Donate I donated money, money to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, with Parker girls, it's volume one. You don't even really need to read like the whole history of Terry Moore stuff. You just read that. It's good. Um, kill lock, uh, the collection of that from IDW is out. Uh, the Dungeons & Dragons uh, Ravenloft uh, trade paperback is out for them. Uh, Star Trek Defiant, issue one. So we've got that. We've got that for the regular cover. And then we have the cool pop art cover nice. for that. Uh, TMNT's Armageddon Games on issue six. We've got the is regular cover. I believe so, but don't quote me on that okay. because there's so many different Armageddon right. games that true. are out there. True, true. Uh, we've got the... Retail uh, 1 in 10 variant for that one. But the other big book of the week, Last Ronin number 2, The Lost Years. I don't even really think we need to like hype this book up any more than it already is yeah. because it's awesome. Right. Uh, we've got the regular cover. We've got the... That's not the East. It's cover C. Cover C. Yeah. But there's the Eastman variant, which I love. And then the 1 in 25 the variant Jima. right there. The Iwo Jima variant. Love it. Uh, House of Slaughter's on issue 13. We've got the regular cover for that. We've got the 1 in 25 variant for that. And then issue 12 of 12 is Keanu Reeves, Matt Kent, and Ron Garney's Berserker. Uh, if you've been reading it, you know there's been a lot of violence and a lot of insanity. Uh, and if you haven't, that's what the book holds for you. Uh, we've got the regular cover, and then we have the Grim Reaper black and white variant for that one there. And then Vampire Slayers on issue 12. And then uh, we got some kids' books, and we got a Super Scroll. So Marvel Select has a new Super Scroll. It's the one that shows up in the Illuminati. So he looks like he's he looks like uh, Black Bolt, and he's got the shouting powers. <laughs> so we'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, we've got still we've still got Avalanche and Longshot, Multiple Man, and Wolverine. Uh, and then we got kids' books. Yeah, I, I can do them. Let go for it. Them. Yeah, we got uh, a collection of the Five Nights at Freddy's stories. Um, we always sell those. My kids got at home, so that's cool. The uh, That's the first volume of Captain Underpants. It's an anniversary edition. Oh, it's nice. in color. That's the big deal about that. Oh. Um, obviously, he moved on. Daft Pilkney's semi-local, or was, living about 45 minutes outside of town. And he's a dogman cat kid guy now. But that, that stuff's still funny. Captain Underpants is still funny. Squished is an original graphic novel from Schoolastic. Squished is basically living with uh, your six siblings and being wedged in there. It's like a loud house type situation. Um, the Batman, Bruce Wayne, uh, Bruce Wayne, not super, let's not call it Batman, is him attending a school where everyone else has superpowers but him. And he doesn't know that everything's going to be okay because we all know that Batman's <laughs> going to be just fine without superpowers. But that's actually really fun. Probably uh, ranges from about an 8 to 12 year old reader. That, I was excited until I opened it up. Uh, We've been, the missus has been asking for a, a early reader for that. But it's got like, how's my kid supposed to read this? It's got like Dedin Dejarin. My, like that's not <laughs> Mandalorian. She's not going to sound that out. She'll be crying at bedtime. Like, well, let's read a book together. Din keeps Grogu safe. No, that's not for a first grader. Even this is difficult. They need to do a better job. Pelimoto. I mean, like, she won't know. Star Wars. Yeah. I can't even say Osako right. Like, and she's going to figure it out. Anyway, <laughs> level one reader for, you know, all right, for, for Grogu. Um, uh, Pop Your Amos is basically a Minecraft, uh, uh, unofficial Minecraft type book. It does really well for us. Uh, Looney Tunes is Looney Tunes. Batman uh, Scooby-Doo is Batman Scooby-Doo. And that's our all ages uh, Star Wars High Republic book, which we actually saw the, the most of off the table 
of even the other Star Wars books. Yeah, yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know why that is. So uh, that's it. Back to John. It's his show. That's our week. Uh, thanks, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, make sure to come out for Late Night Comics on Thursday. It's going to be great. Come uh, out on Late Night Comics on Thursday. I, I, yeah. I really... We, we started grooming it and everything like that, and the turnout's been great. And it's really fun because all the employees come and hang out, too. Mm-hmm. I really like late-night comics. It's my new favorite thing. And it's kind of, like I said, a, a button soup type situation where every employee can throw in what they want to it. Like, we're going to throw in chips and Irish beer, and we'll play records and everything like that. But the vibe's been really cool. And mm-hmm. I, uh, I I really enjoy being here during late-night comics. So it's a lot of people that collect comics. The, the vibe behind late-night comics was basically that whenever we would run events like free comic book day or the Christmas party. I want everything in its place and everything lined up and everything has to look perfect. Not at late night comics. We drag <laughs> stuff out of the storage locker, dump it on the table, pull the back issue bins, throw them on the ground. Everything's a mess and I love it. I love that we're able to do that because the people that are there are there to read and buy comics. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So again, thanks for coming out and have yourselves a good night. Auf Wiedersehen, Ben. Mm-hmm. Yes.